Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be none other than my 2017 favorites. Woo! I bought a lot of makeup this year. <laughs> I got a hair. I'm a makeup hoarder and I bought loads and loads and loads of makeup all year long. So it was really difficult for me to kind of narrow down my favorites. And I think what I chose was a fantastic group of makeup that I constantly reached for during every makeup application. Um, P.S. Not all of the products that I'm talking about today came out in 2017. I don't think. There may be some that have been out for a while, but those are still my personal favorites. If you guys are interested in my personal 2017 favorites, go grab a snack, grab some coffee, and let's get started, shall we? What do I want to start with? Let's start with my face. Okay. You guys know I love foundation and I love concealer. Like, those are my absolute go-to. My go-to, my holy grail this year has been the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation and Concealer. I fluctuate between the shades 5 and 6. I cannot express to you guys how much I love this foundation. On the back of it, it claims medium to full coverage, lightweight, oil-free formula, long-wearing, water-resistant, and sweat-proof, which I can all attest to that they are absolutely long-wearing, water-resistant, and sweat-proof. Absolutely. Uh, weightless, check. Oil-free, check. And medium to full coverage. I definitely would say that this is more of a full coverage for me personally because I like to build it up. But how do I describe this foundation? I would definitely say it's as if Urban Decay's Naked Skin and All Nighter Foundation had a baby. That would be the Milani Conceal and Perfect. I think it's about 10 bucks. I get mine from Walmart and it's absolutely amazing. First concealer, I have three concealers because I couldn't decide because I feel like all of them are fantastic. But my number one definitely is going to be my Tarte Shape Tape. And I use the shade Light Medium. This is just such a great concealer. I love the fact that it has this huge doe foot applicator. It's amazing. It gets the job done. I don't have to set it if I don't want to. But definitely if you let it dry down, you definitely will get more of a full coverage out of it. But I absolutely love it. It's an amazing eyeshadow base as well. Another cons favorite concealer of mine that I just started using recently during the holiday season is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Dark Circles in the shade Neutralizer. It's The only downside to this concealer is that it looks icky in the lid after a while, so... I really like this concealer though. I mean, again, if you let it dry, it's very comparable to the Tarte Shape Tape. I use this under my Tarte Shape Tape to go ahead and correct some dark circles as well as brighten. And then I layer on my Tarte Shape Tape on top of it. But I absolutely adore this concealer. I think that it's amazing. I want to say for the price, it's like $8. I think I bought mine from Target. It was about 8 bucks, But it is phenomenal and it never ever 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 fails to perform for me so I really really like it and I think that it's a great formula because again I do tend to get drier under eyes and I tend to crease very easily so the fact that this doesn't dry out my under eye and that it doesn't crease super easily it's just a winner for me if you haven't tried it what are you doing with your life you need to go buy it last but not least my favorite concealer from Sephora is the Sephora brand Make No Mistake High Coverage Concealer in the shade Vanilla Bean. You guys, I absolutely love this concealer. It's very comparable to the Amazing Cosmetics concealer a little bit, and I'm not kidding when I say this, a little bit goes very, 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 very far. I probably start out with that much because watch when I rub it in just like it's just so it's so creamy these are for when my under eyes start acting crazy and they get dry 
or I'll just dab a little bit for my no makeup makeup days and it just it works great I feel like it blends right into my skin I didn't want that concealer to necessarily brighten my under eyes I just wanted that concealer to be able to just blend into my skin for the days where I don't want to look super high I think it would be great for people with hyperpigmentation some days I also use it over like the hyperpigmentation I have from acne so if you guys have you know like any type of dark spots on your face or hyperpigmentation on your face and you guys want to conceal it that concealer is absolutely amazing and for the price and for how little you have to use I want to say it was like $14 I put the link in the description box because if you guys have not tried one of those three concealers please by all means try them out because I know for a fact if you went out right now and bought any of these concealers, you would not be disappointed whatsoever. Moving on, um, I want to do contour. This year, the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contour Stick in the shade Call Me Maple. I want to say this is like $4. This was my absolute favorite go-to contour stick. I don't know if it's a color or if it's a texture or if it's just everything that I love about it. But every time I wore this, I always felt so bronzy and so beautiful and glowy. And it didn't leave like that crazy red streak that I typically get. Products that I do put on my skin tend to oxidize pretty frequently. So the fact that I could just put this on, buff it out, literally walk around the house without setting it, make a cup of coffee, make a cup of tea, what have you, I could just like come back to it and it didn't look crazy and it didn't look red so i really really highly recommend trying the contour sticks from wet and wild I, again i think they're like 4.99 or 5.99 i think that they're absolutely phenomenal sticking with highlighting and contouring sorry i apologize for this beat up packaging because it has been used and it has been abused. I want to give a shout out to Koki Cosmetics and this is their powder contour palette. I think this palette is absolutely phenomenal. It's like an exact dupe for the Kat Von D. felt like the Koki Cosmetics palette absolutely executed that and I love the fact that it has a banana powder and then it also has this peach color that I like to mix it to and then I go ahead and set my under eye and it helps with my dark circles. I know like on camera sometimes my dark circles don't look super bad but when I'm in school and I'm exhausted and I've been doing a hundred thousand things during the week my dark bags like to really come through and when I go ahead and I do my makeup and I set with that peach and banana powder mixture it just like does something for me. I just absolutely love it and the texture of it is so nice and fine. It's not chunky. It doesn't build up like I could literally pack it on all day and it doesn't look crazy or chunky or dry under my eyes. So the fact that it doesn't make my under eyes look dry, it's what really sold me. I want to say that this was like $15. It was absolutely amazing. If you guys uh, can't find Koki Cosmetics at your local Walmart, definitely check them out online. I did see them online and they're absolutely phenomenal. The next thing I want to give a huge shout out to, which I know for a fact did not come out this year, but the fact that I held off so long and I was so judgmental towards this damn bronzer, which I don't know why, but I think it was just, it wasn't the packaging. I want to say it was just like the color. It just turned me off and it wasn't something that I like went into a store and instantly reached for. It wasn't something that I was instantly drawn to, but it is something that completely changed my makeup this year and that is Benefits Hula Bronzer. So when I initially purchased this bronzer, I purchased it in a little kit and I want to say it came with their high beam, the Hula contour stick, and then the travel size Hula bronzer and I bought it I think for like 25 bucks or 24 bucks because I didn't want to invest in the $30 bronzer and then be like, okay, I'm over it. Like that isn't 
anything that I expected but after watching numerous YouTube videos I everybody was ranting and raving about it and I was like dude what if you're missing out on something great so like just give it a try so I did and I absolutely fell in love with in the packaging it doesn't look like it would be like super super bronzy it definitely warms up my skin and it gives me that sun kissed look without looking orange I know that if you've watched a ton of makeup reviews or makeup tutorials a lot of people use this and everybody says the same thing it's not too orange and it's not too red it's just like the perfect shade it's the perfect tan so whatever y'all doing over there I benefit y'all keep doing it and keep making that hula bronzer pop in now for my all over face powder the one that I always 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 reach for again is another product that's super beat up and that's my Maybelline fit me set and smooth normal to dry powder I use the shade 240 and that's golden beige I absolutely love this powder it reminds me so much of max studio fix except for the fact that it doesn't leave almost like a chalky residue on my skin when back in the day I don't know if it was just like my skin that was dry was I not priming my skin right I don't know what it was but when I used to use max studio fix it used to leave almost like a chalky residue on my skin and I love the coverage but I didn't like the fact that I had like I could see the powder on my skin so since then probably since I was about 18 I have always been looking for the perfect face powder and I've literally feel like I've tried everything under the sun I needed a face powder and I was like you know what let me go ahead and just try this Maybelline fit me because everybody loves the foundations and everybody is talking and speaking of them so highly and that you know this is right around the time too I feel like the drugstore game uh just like took off skyrocketing so I was like you know what like it can't hurt I think it's like eight bucks so I bought it and ever since then I repurchased it twice and I haven't gone back I just been talking way too damn much and I need some tea because I got a dry ass mouth okay where was I so that was powder okay now I want to talk about another under eye setting powder other than my Koki Cosmetics. This is just an individual under eye powder that I happened to pick up just on a whim. So I was out shopping and I saw it and I was like, hmm, that sounds interesting. The name of it is the Prep Set and Glow Illuminating Translucent Powder. I used to love baking that was like my thing but my eyes are dry underneath so like the fact that I was baking just made my under eyes look super crazy and I had a ton of coworkers be like Dre girl like come on and I knew that I needed to stop baking but like I just didn't know how to go about it so I feel like this powder literally is a powder that just set me like it just took my highlighting and my setting under eye game to a whole nother level and that is the Milani prep set and glow illuminating translucent powder there is a huge hole in the center of it don't judge me because I use it so often but this is what it looks like it does have just a pinch of pink in there but not enough to be like what the hell um and when it says illuminating it's not like um it's not like a sparkle it's literally like a sheen I don't know how to describe it and it doesn't show on my hand I went to go swatch it but I don't know if you guys could see it it's kind of like a sheen on my finger but it's absolutely phenomenal it doesn't give flashback it doesn't look crazy on the skin especially because I'm more olive um, more of like an olive complexion even when I got super super tan in Hawaii during the summer I still used it and it still looked absolutely amazing I want to say it was like ten dollars and it literally changed my under eye setting concealer game like I don't know if that makes sense but it definitely took my makeup to a whole nother level it is something that I find myself putting in my makeup bag to take with me for a touch-up and the fact that it's pressed it just makes my life so much easier and whoever came up with this concept at Milani and put it in motion you're a winner and you have a gift because
because let me tell you, it's a game changer for sure. Now, I know highlighters came out left and right. They were being thrown at us this year and so many companies came out with so many amazing products this year. But I have to say that my number one highlighter that I continuously reached for and not this shade in particular because I know the shade just came out but the formula itself goes to wet and wild their mega glow highlighter powder illuminator this is in the shade golden flower crown and that's what I have on right now but you guys like let's just take a moment and how beautiful is that their formula is so smooth it's so buttery it's incredibly pigmented it's incredibly affordable like there's just nothing like these highlighters that i've come across i feel like in my skin i have some texture left behind especially the fact that i'm still battling acne so sometimes i'm a little skeptical about putting highlighters on my cheeks especially because i don't want to like enhance the fact that i have acne sometimes on my cheeks but this formula in general it just like it hugs my skin and it gives like a true wet look to the skin opposed to like a super powdery highlighter i absolutely love that powder for my blush i am gonna have to give it up to none other than surprise surprise milani i use the milani baked blushes in bellissimo bronze and this is a baked powder blush it says that it's a multi-purpose blush that shapes contours highlights which it does come with a little um mirror and then it does come there's usually a brush in there, but typical me, I lost it. And this is, again, 06 Bellissimo Bronze. And this is actually what the blush itself looks like. This is an $8 blush, but let me just tell you guys, if you love blushes, but you don't want it to look like you're wearing a ton of blush or you like something that gives you more of a sheen, gives you more of a natural like glow natural flush color definitely check out the milani ones because i feel like this definitely changes the game for me i love buying blushes but i don't like wearing blushes if that makes sense like i don't want it to look like i have a lot and i'm very picky about blush but it definitely definitely was a game changer when I purchase the Bellissimo bronze because it literally goes with every makeup look. Who doesn't want to look bronzy? Who doesn't want to look glowy? Who doesn't want to look sun-kissed? And that's exactly what that blush does. Now I'm going to start with brows and then we'll go into eyeshadows and then we'll kind of wrap it up. Oh, we'll do like eyeliner and mascara and all that good stuff and then we'll wrap it up with lip products and my favorite tools of 2017. So my go-to brow products definitely are uh, the NYX Precision Brow Pencil and it's actually like a pretty big pencil like the packaging itself comes with the spoolie on the other end and um, I use the shade Espresso um, but it kind of looks like an Anastasia brow pencil except this one is super super it's not like creamy waxy but it definitely like you don't have to push down on the skin super hard to get color payoff and it's super affordable i think they're about eight or nine dollars i purchased mine from ulta and i absolutely love this brow product i'm still looking for a way to perfect my eyebrow technique for myself i want to find a brow technique where i'm like damn my brows are snatched but um until then i'm gonna stick with my nyx precision brow pencil because this pencil in general i found from every brow pencil that i think i've ever used this is the first pencil that has actually allowed me to create hair like strokes and doesn't come out to the hair stroke itself doesn't come out too thick it doesn't come out blotchy it doesn't come out you know like lighter than the actual color itself so this overall is just like a great product to go ahead and get your brow shape and to create real hair like strokes 2018 i feel is going to be the year that i find i find that brow technique um the next product is my cabral benefit uh cream gel brow color 
and I use this in the shade number six. If you guys haven't tried this brow product, like what are you doing? Um, it's absolutely amazing. I don't think that this came out this year. I want to say it came out probably about two, two and a half years ago now uh, because this is my second product, but it's absolutely amazing. I use the darkest one because I usually have jet black hair, so I like um, my eyebrows to kind of match my hair, have a little bit of contrast, but I don't like any red in my eyebrows and I feel like some of the brow pomades from Benefit definitely have that red undertone so I try to stay away from it but up at top it has a cute little brush and I actually really really like this brush for the fact that it's super thin and I have a lot of control when it comes to getting my eyebrow shape down and also filling my eyebrow in so I feel like my eyebrows stay on forever when I use that product. I know it is a bit more on the expensive side so if you're looking for a brow pomade I would say that my favorite drugstore one would probably definitely be the Tame and Frame from NYX. I also think that's really good and I also use that one in the shade Espresso as well but that this definitely is my go-to brow pomade for sure. Okay, so next I think we'll move on to my favorite eyeshadows of 2017. And when I initially sat down and began brainstorming what were my favorite 2017 eyeshadow palettes, I thought to myself, how in the hell am I going to choose my favorite eyeshadow palettes of 2017? So many amazing cosmetic brands came out with absolutely amazing eyeshadow palettes. I'm such a sucker for eyeshadow palettes. If it's beautiful visually, I want it. Like, there's just no way around it. If all the colors are cohesive or if it sparks some, like, type of creativity in my little brain, then I automatically just, like, have to have it and there's no way around it. But I want to start in no particular order, and I chose three brands that I think came out with what were my personal favorite eyeshadow palettes of 2017. And the first one, the first shout out I'm going to have to give is to Dose of Colors. I think in the beginning of the year they released baked browns and marvelous mauves, and then towards the end of the year in like late November or early December they released Blushing Berries and Sassy Siennas. If you guys have never seen these eyeshadow palettes, don't worry, I don't blame you because I never, to be 100% honest, I never truly like really hardcore paid attention because I was like, oh it's just like another matte palette, whatever. But for whatever reason, when I revisited these eyeshadow palettes, I was like, what have I been doing? I need these. So the first one is the Baked Browns. And I absolutely love this palette for the simple fact that it's just an everyday matte eyeshadow palette. Also, I really, really like the fact that these are travel friendly. I don't have to worry about packing 50 million different individual eyeshadows or three different palettes to have my perfect matte palette. It's all just like right here in this one palette with those five shades. The next one is definitely going to be the Sassy Siennas, which is coral, probably a little bit more corally, a little bit more orangey, a little bit more warm. But these two together, the Baked Browns and the Sassy Siennas, like... How could you not just be obsessed with these palettes? I mean, they do look very similar, but once they're swatched, they're very different. They apply very creamy, very smooth, and I just absolutely adore them. Again, because I'm in this pink and purple berry phase right now, I initially gravitated toward the Blushing Berries, which is absolutely amazing. They're very... Very pink, very pur the center shade especially is very purpley, but I have a deep admiration for these palettes. I think that when you put together very cohesive and beautiful matte shadows that 
apply beautifully as well as give amazing color payoff you just can't go wrong and i want to say that those retail for 32 dollars i picked mine up at ulta and i don't regret it whatsoever so if you guys haven't picked up these dose of colors eyeshadow palettes you need to go get these i promise you you will not regret them and they're travel friendly the next palette i want to talk about is probably my favorite palette of the year for numerous reasons and that palette is my morphe dare to create 39a palette this palette is huge i mean look at it compared to my head but i absolutely love this palette i probably would never take this with me on a trip just because of how big it is but i absolutely love this palette on the inside it says be your own muse we dare you which i think is pretty cool because Whenever I open up this palette and I see that quote, I'm always kind of like, okay, do something different. Like, you're always so stuck in your warm, bronzy tones. Like, do something different. And I feel like Morphe greatly executed this palette. I mean, visually, it's just so appealing, especially for the simple fact that everything's color coordinated. Like, here's your greens, here's your blue. Those are your pinks, and then those are, like, your browns and your oranges. But I want to say the number one thing that sold me on this palette, like without a doubt, didn't even have to think about it. When they uploaded it to Instagram, let me say this, when they uploaded it to Instagram, the center big pans, I was like, are those contour colors? Are those blushes? Like what's happening? And then I read the caption and I love the fact that all these are transition shades. All these are are shades that you would reach for when you begin a super colorful makeup look no matter if you're working with the blues or the pinks or the greens or it doesn't matter like you initially will always reach for a transition color and I thought that that was brilliant because typically when you use a palette what are the first colors to go your transition colors so I thought that not only was it visually appealing not only was the huge pans of transition colors brilliant but i think that the pigment and the texture behind these palettes are absolutely phenomenal when i began swatching these pinky red orange colors up here in the corner i was like this has got to be a joke and i picked this palette up when i went to the morphe grand openings at valley fair and that was initially the first palette that i reached for and i've heard numerous people on youtube numerous people on instagram rant and rave about this palette and how much they love it and i just want to say that i think morphe did an absolutely amazing job on this palette and if you guys have not got the chance to go ahead and pick this palette up i highly recommend it i will say that this 39a palette was the palette that has just kind of like re-inspired me to begin working with color again i feel just like for so long i just wanted to put on my makeup and go to work and that was that and i didn't really put much thought behind it i was exhausted i was drained i was ran into the ground and i just didn't have that creative drive and then i started school and then that creative drive died even more if that's possible so i definitely want to say thank you morphe for creating this palette because you guys definitely have re-inspired me and you guys have definitely given me the best palette i could think of to work with so my last and final eyeshadow palette is gonna be um a beauty blogger beauty youtubers collaboration and that is a kathleen lights uh, eyeshadow palette with ColourPop. This is what it looks like. I actually got this palette for Christmas and if you guys have not seen this palette yet, I absolutely love and adore this palette so much. This color right here is actually like a shimmery color that I have yet to use but every time I stare at it I just think of my San Jose Sharks jersey and I just I want to admire it from afar if that makes sense. But this palette i actually dug into this was my first color pop palette that i dug into that i received for christmas and i just want to say that she did an amazing job an amazing job at creating the most perfect warm tone rose gold gold palette 
I think that I have ever laid my eyes on that I believe that I have ever used this is everything that I would hope for in a palette if you guys have ever used ColourPop eyeshadows you guys already know that the formula of their shadows are phenomenal they killed it when they released their little pan press individual shadows and the fact that Kathleen did such a great job at creating this palette it just it it's definitely something that I find myself reaching for more often than I don't. Sticking with eyes, I just want to give a quick shout out to my favorite mascara and my favorite eyeliner. So my favorite liquid liner this year is the NYX Epic Ink Liner. And it comes in one color. This is black. And it is a waterproof liner, which I will say... My eyes are extremely watery, especially in the corners. Everything that I put on them, everything loves to bleed and get down into my tear ducts. Unfortunately, this does the same thing and I had high hopes that it wouldn't. After I couldn't find my NYC liquid liner anymore, I don't know what happened to that company and it makes me really, really sad because that is the only liquid liner that does not bleed on me. But back to the NYX liner. This is an amazing liquid liner it's amazing it is a felt tip which I typically don't ever lean towards a felt tip eyeliner but it is so thin it gives the most crisp wing I just think it's a great eyeliner and if you guys are in uh, if you guys are in the market for a new liquid waterproof eyeliner and things don't bleed on you very easily definitely pick this up I got this at Ulta and I always carry one with me. I have one at home. I have one in my car and I have one. Now my favorite mascara. So this was a toss up. I absolutely love my Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir mascara. That is like my holy grail. But unfortunately it is expensive and I wanted to find something that made me just as happy but wasn't as pricey. And I held off on buying this for a long time. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because Nobody hate me for saying this, but the Voluminous Carbon Black Mascara from L'Oreal just doesn't do it for me. I tried repurchasing it several times throughout the year, probably about two or three times, and I just can't get into it. My lashes are very long, but they're sparse from not taking very good care of my eyelashes and wearing falsies. But I will say that the Voluminous Lash Paradise from L'Oreal definitely has to be a winner. The applicator itself reminds me a ton of the Better Than Sex applicator from Too Faced, but I absolutely love this mascara. It just, it builds my lashes up nice and thick without them clumping, and it also adds a little bit more length to them, which is what I also like. It doesn't flake underneath, it doesn't run, it doesn't like into my eye it's just like a really really great drugstore mascara so with that being said shout out to l'oreal you guys killed it when it came to the voluminous lash paradise mascara Woo! we're almost done i need another sip of tea i had to switch out my tea because my tea got super cold and everybody i mean everybody in my family like not even just in my house but like in my family has been so sick so I've been drinking tea with honey to make sure that your girl doesn't get sick I've been exercising shout out new year's resolutions oh my number one lip liner brand NYX number one typically I do find myself always reaching for the NYX suede uh, matte lip liners and this is in the shade downtown beauty I literally have probably like, I don't know, oh this is so dirty, don't judge me, but I here's a swatch of it. And I prefer something darker brown because I always blend it out anyways, but this is the pencil itself and it's just, it works for me. It's my go-to. You know when you find something and you just have to stick with it because you're scared that if you give something else a try that that other lip liner brand is just gonna stop making it so I just chose to stock up and it's my go-to I'm never let down I use it with 
my red lipsticks. I use it with my dark brown lipsticks. I use it with my nudes. It's just an overall great color. If you are going to use it with the nudes, make sure that you have another lip liner color, a nude lip liner that you can blend it out with to make your own concoction. Typically, I'm very, 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 very picky about what lip liners I use for the certain fact that I have a really difficult skin tone to work with. So if I find a lip liner, sometimes they tend to oxidize and turn like red or orangey on me and I'm like, girl, what is that? Don't, no, stop. Please, please, no. Moving on to liquid lipsticks, I have two brands and first and foremost, as always, it is my dose of colors. These two shades, uh, sand and knock on wood, these are my go-to colors. I literally mix everything with these two shades. It doesn't matter what brand or what type of lipstick or lip gloss, I am constantly, constantly mixing these two shades. So the first color I'm going to swatch, if you haven't seen, is Suede, or sorry, is Sand. And the second color, so this is going to be Sand. And then the second color is Knock On Wood, which is a little bit more of like a, it's like a, I don't know how to describe this color. It's kind of like an orangey brown, orangey nude. And I really, really admire this color. These two together actually create a bomb and perfect nude for me. I know that these didn't come out this year, but I will say that overall, these are definitely my holy grail liquid lips. I just recently started getting into lip gloss this year, and I know that neither one of these lip glosses launched this year, but I will say with having short hair, it's so much easier for me to wear gloss because my curly hair is not gravitating towards my glossy lips, and I'm not finding like hair and like gloss smeared all over my face. So my first go-to gloss is my NYX Butter Gloss in the shade fortune cookie and I absolutely love 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 this lip gloss it's so good I'm gonna actually swatch it by itself and then I'm gonna actually put it on top of sand from dose of colors so I can show you guys so this is fortune cookie by itself it's like a nudie pink and then that is fortune cookie on top of sand and I absolutely adore this lip gloss. I have a ton of different nude lipsticks that I love to wear so the fact that this is so universal and goes with every single nude concoction that I can think of it just makes my world go around so if you guys haven't tried this specific shade you know what to do. So now that I have finished talking about all my 2017 favorite cosmetics I want to talk to you guys super super quickly about my favorite 2017 tools that I use and there's only like a handful of them so we won't be here forever the first one is super super simple and that is just um my candle coaster that I've been using as my palette I bought this from Walmart for a dollar 97 I think and it's just super convenient because I can put all my foundations and whatnot like I said in some of my snapchats I don't know if you guys follow me my snapchats my insta stories I have a lot of white furniture in my room I have like white fur and I'm not the most responsible person to have those items it's just really nice decor so to prevent myself from getting makeup everywhere I use my uh, candle coaster my second most favorite product is definitely going to be the Swispers Instant Brush Cleaner and this is just like the Vera Mona except it's from Walmart and I think it was like four dollars maybe three or two I don't know it was something incredibly incredibly cheap and I just love to use this because again it just is like the Vera Mona color swatch and you can just like clean it clean your brush off really fast and move on to your next color my third favorite tool this year definitely has to be my morphe sponge i want to say that this is a highlight and contour sponge so it definitely has that edge to it and it allows you to you know like get right up into the corners contour your nose do what you gotta do and this side i typically like to use for foundation this is probably the most soft no this is probably the second 
most soft sponge I've ever felt that is comparable to my beauty blender. So I really, really, really recommend trying these if you guys haven't tried these sponges yet. I know that you guys won't be let down and they're available on Morphe.com and in Morphe stores. The next one is going to be my Kiss Strip Lash Adhesive with Aloe. It's formaldehyde free and it's latex free. It's $2 at Walmart. It's absolutely amazing and it literally is a game changer for me. It keeps my eyelashes on all day long. They're always there. It's super easy. If something starts popping off in the middle of the day or if we're out and we're partying or if we're having dinner or something, I need to re-glue my lash really fast. It's really great because it has like the little brush adhesive or sorry, it has like the little brush applicator on it. So it's really, really easy to use. It's really easy to maneuver. And if you guys have problems with you know, latex or formaldehyde. If eyelash glues tend to really irritate your eyes, definitely give this a try. It's only $2 and I highly, highly recommend it. Everybody that I've ever used this on is like, oh my god, that has to be the best eyelash glue I have ever tried. And I'm like, I know, right? And this is in the shade clear. I don't know if they have a dark one, but definitely try the clear one first uh, because I have not tried the dark one, so I couldn't tell you guys how well it works. Okay guys, so that is going to conclude my 2017 favorite cosmetics and favorite tools. I hope that if you guys have any questions or comments, you guys will leave them down below. My Instagram and my Twitter is linked in the description box. I will also try to list all my 2017 goodies in the description box as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that bell for notifications so that way you guys are always in the know when I upload a new video. Other than that, I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye guys!